Hello, Dr. Joe here of the 2020forum.com. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about wrist blood pressure monitors versus upper arm blood pressure monitors. Uh, which of them should you buy? Which is better? Uh, indeed, I've done a video on this topic before, uh, probably about two years ago or so. And in that video, my choice was the upper arm blood pressure monitors. And uh, has my view changed since then? Uh, no, it hasn't. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, studies uh, related to this subject. And uh, we're also going to look at the technology behind digital blood pressure monitors in general. And of course, that reflects on which of them uh, will provide more accurate results as well. And we're also going to look at what Omron Healthcare actually said. Omron, they're the biggest makers of digital blood pressure monitors. Their view is uh, important uh, in this subject. And I'm also going to tell you about when to use wrist blood pressure monitors. So it promises to be exciting, so you stay tuned. So let's get started. Like I said, we're going to be looking at studies uh, in relation to this. So the first study uh, is this one here. Uh, it's titled Accuracy and Reliability of Wrist Cuff Devices for Self-Measurement of Blood Pressure. And this was published in 2002 in the Journal of Hypertension. Now, what was this first study about? Well, the study uh, was actually uh, a validation exercise of wrist monitors against the standard sphygmo manometer. So when I'm talking about the standard sphygmo manometer is the usual device that we use in hospital settings uh, where we actually inflate uh, you know, the, the, the cuff ourselves manually and then we check the reading to see uh, which one is the systolic, which is the upper reading, and then of course the diastolic, the uh, lower reading. So uh, that's what this study was doing. Uh, it was actually a validation exercise of the wrist blood pressure monitors. And uh, the result was that the BP values uh, obtained in the palmar flexion uh, position was significantly higher. So when the palm was a little bit flexed, uh, they got higher readings. Uh, the conclusion was that uh, the results suggest that wrist cuff devices in the present form are inadequate for self-measurement of blood pressure and thus are inadequate for general use or clinical or practical use. Okay, so that's what this study is telling us. Essentially, this study is talking about the uh, unreliability or the sensitivity of the wrist blood pressure monitors when it comes to position okay so that's uh, one study and you could argue that well that study was a long time ago that was 2002 so let's look at study number two uh, and this one uh, was published in 2016 so we're fast forwarding to 2016 and this study is titled poor reliability of wrist blood pressure self measurement at home uh, it was published in the journal of hypertension and uh, what was this study about well, it's an interesting study actually. Uh, this study looked at 721 individuals from the general population. So the researchers took 721 individuals from the general population. They trained them on how to use both the wrist blood pressure monitor and the upper arm monitor. The blood pressure was measured in the office as a reference. So the blood pressure of the individuals was measured in the office as a reference and these uh, individuals were sent home to measure their blood pressure at home, both with the wrist uh, blood pressure monitor and the upper arm blood pressure monitor. So what did they find? Well, what they found was that in 86% of the participants, they had higher wrist blood pressure readings of at least five millimeters of mercury uh, and above. In 63% of the participants, they actually had wrist blood pressure readings of 10 millimeters of mercury or higher okay that is really really significant okay when we're talking about a blood pressure reading of say systolic of 150 and then you get home you're getting 160 so that is quite a difference so that is uh, so their conclusion was that the use of wrist devices for home self measurement leads to frequent detection of falsely elevated blood pressure values so uh, if you remember in that video, those of you who haven't watched it, uh, I'll just tell you what happened uh, because this is actually related to what happened to me. I bought the 
uh, wrist blood pressure device and uh, when I started using it I was actually getting wild readings and for that reason I wasn't happy with it and uh, I sent it back to the retailer so this uh, very study uh, is in agreement with what happened to me so let's look at study number three uh, there are four studies we're looking at by the way so this is uh, the third one uh, this study is titled wrist blood pressure uh, overestimates blood pressure measured at the upper arm so what's this study about well it's a study that actually compared wrist blood pressure readings and upper arm readings using the conventional sphygmomanometer. manometer so this study did not look at the regular digital uh, wrist blood pressure monitors rather all they did was measure uh, the blood pressure using the regular sphig so they took readings from here using the brachiolatory and then from here as well using the radiolatory and they compared the readings to see which one was higher and uh, or whether they're essentially the same so what were the results uh, well what they found was blood pressure measured at the wrist consistently so the key word here is consistently uh, overestimated blood pressure taken at the arm. So blood pressure measured at the wrist consistently overestimated blood pressure uh, taken at the arm. So the wrist blood pressure measurement uh, reading was always higher than the one taken from the upper arm. That's what this study is saying. And their conclusion was that wrist blood pressure measurement is not a valid alternative to traditional measurement at the arm and its use should be discouraged. So this was uh, one study uh, that is not in favor of uh, wrist blood pressure measurement. So let's look at study number four. It's not all bad news for uh, uh, the wrist blood pressure monitors. Where here is one study that is in favor of, of them uh, and it's titled Reproducibility of Wrist Home Blood Pressure Measurement with Position Sensor and Automatic Data Storage. So what was this study about? Well, it was actually about the reproducibility of home wrist BP measurement matched against the office and ambulatory BP measurements. And they used one particular device, and this one was supplied by Omron, and the particular device is uh, the Omron wrist device HEM-637IT, and it's got a position sensor. So what were their results? Well, the reproducibility of home BP measurement was significantly higher than the reproducibility of office BP and ambulatory blood pressure measurement. So that was their finding and the conclusion being essentially the same, that if you use this, uh, this device, uh, this particular device, this specific device, uh, you got superior results uh, in terms of reproducibility to office blood pressure and 24 hour ambulatory blood pressure measurement. Well, I should say this, um, I'm not being cynical, but the study was actually sponsored by Omron, okay? So make of that what you will, all right? So those are the studies, all right? So we looked at four studies and three studies are not so much in favor of the wrist blood pressure measurement, but this fourth study we looked at is saying that uh, the blood pressure readings are taken using that particular uh, wrist blood pressure device uh, produce reproducible results, okay? That is what that study is saying, the study number four. Uh, but like I said, uh, you should look at whoever sponsored the study. So now, the next thing I want to talk about is the technology behind these uh, devices. So we're talking about the digital blood pressure devices in general, the technology behind it. Uh, because it's probably going to give us some idea of why some of these devices are more reliable, give more accurate results than others. So what's the technology? Well, the digital blood pressure monitors actually use oxylometric technology. What does this mean? It means uh, it measures uh, the vibration of blood traveling through the arteries and converts the movement into digital readings. Okay, so interesting. So, what do you think will happen uh, in a smaller artery? Well, I'm not a physicist, but uh, I will hazard a guess that when you're looking at vibration uh, in terms of a solution flowing through a vessel and a device has to measure the uh, vibration in the vessel, I would imagine that 
the flow through a smaller vessel will be more turbulent than a larger vessel. Uh, and here I'm surmising that is that the reason why we have higher readings with the wrist blood pressure monitors? Because the wrist blood pressure monitors are looking at the radial artery, okay, which is a smaller vessel here compared to the brachial artery, which we normally use for the upper arm, okay, it's a bigger vessel. So as the vessel travels down the arm, it gets narrower and narrower. So is it possible that the wrist blood pressure monitors give us higher readings because the radial artery is smaller, so the vessel caliber is narrower, so you're going to have a more turbulent flow within it compared to a bigger artery, the brachial artery. Just something for us to chew on, okay? If you're somebody who did physics, you could uh, let me know, but I think that is uh, a possible explanation as to why we get higher readings with the wrist blood pressure monitors. So, I also uh, looked at Omron. Uh, they are the biggest manufacturer of uh, uh, digital blood pressure monitors, so they should know. So when you ask Omron, uh, between the wrist blood pressure monitors and the upper arm monitors, which ones should we use? Well, here is what Omron had to say, okay? Because they run lots of validation tests, uh, thousands and thousands of validation tests, so they should know. Here's what Omron had to say. It says, upper arm blood pressure monitors are recommended for people who buy a blood pressure monitor for the first time. So if you're a first time user, Omron is saying, you should be going for the upper arm blood pressure monitor. And they also say, people who have high blood pressure and need to control it. Okay, so if you're somebody who's got high blood pressure and you need to control it, Omron, the biggest manufacturer of digital blood pressure devices, is saying that you should be going for the upper arm monitor. Make sense? Uh, I mean, they should know uh, because they've been running thousands and thousands of tests. So uh, if you don't want to take my word for it, maybe you should take Omron's. So next thing I want to talk about is, well, okay, not everybody will be suitable to use the upper arm blood pressure monitors. So on what occasion can you use the wrist blood pressure monitors? So because I understand that, you know, there are situations where uh, the upper arm monitor may not just be uh, appropriate or suitable, if you like. So uh, these are the uh, uh, occasions when you could consider using wrist blood pressure monitors. One is if you are an obese individual who cannot find a big enough blood pressure cuff to fit your arm. So uh, because if you use a small cuff and you are a big person, you've got a big arm, you're gonna get really falsely high readings. So that is not appropriate. So. On those occasions, you could consider using the wrist blood pressure monitor, okay? But there are big cuffs uh, that you can buy, all right? You can actually uh, search for big blood pressure cuffs that will accommodate your arm. Uh, but if you cannot find any, then of course, you may consider using the wrist blood pressure monitor. Also, you will consider using wrist blood pressure monitor if you are under the age of 45. So if you're younger, uh, you may want to use wrist blood pressure monitor uh, because as we get older, our blood vessels, uh, our arteries tend to get a little bit harder and uh, they are less pliable and you're going to have more turbulence, uh, which is going to give you higher readings uh, when you use the uh, wrist blood pressure monitor. So very young people may consider using uh, the uh, wrist blood pressure monitors. And also, if you've got a good experience with the upper arm monitor, so if you've had a very good experience with it, you've been hypertensive for a while and you're very good at it, you may consider using the wrist blood pressure monitors. However, if you're going to do that, you must satisfy these conditions. The first one is you need to validate the accuracy of your wrist blood pressure monitor with your doctor's machine. So take it to your doctor's office, uh, check it against his or hers, and uh, see how it matches, okay? That's very important. The other thing you must do is that if you're going to use a wrist blood pressure monitor, preferably it should be validated. Of course, we've said that already, but it should also have a position sensor. So if you satisfy these conditions, then of course you may consider using a wrist blood pressure monitor. But 
my view is that as a first choice, you should be going for the upper arm blood pressure monitor. That is my view. Uh, of course, uh, if there are mitigating circumstances where you cannot use the upper arm monitor, then of course, uh, go ahead and get yourself the wrist one. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, and uh, you know, especially the opinion of Omron is also important in this matter because like I said, they're the biggest manufacturer, so they should know. Uh, so uh, if you got some value from this video as usual, please give it a thumbs up, please like the video and uh, share this video with your friends, family and colleagues. Uh, please join us at the 2020forum.com where we talk about things like this, you know, uh, high blood pressure issues and other wellness issues. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do subscribe. I think that's about it. Uh, oh, by the way, you got any comments, any opinion regarding this, uh, go ahead, leave your comments right below as usual. I think that's about it. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.